forward to just uh, this time together. God is always looking for fruit. Leslie and I have been walking each day. Yeah, this is the 60th. This is the 59th 10 at 10, and it's the 60th day of lockdown. And uh, every day on lockdown, Leslie and I have been walking. We've been um, enjoying going for a walk. So I just need to just do something. Um, we've been enjoying going on our, our walks, and we walk over the fields nearby, and at the beginning of it, they were completely brown, just earth and we wondered what was going to grow, if anything was going to grow. And then one day there was a wisp of colour, just a slight hint of a wisp of colour. And just protruding out of the ground was a little green shoot. And every day it became clearer and clearer. A crop was coming up. And now it's about 25 centimetres high in places. Not everywhere, because where, the, where their paths are, where there's, there's, they're hard and there's, a, there's no crop there. Although seed was sown, it was drilled properly, but it, it doesn't grow. Um, there are weeds around the edges that we're noticing and we don't live in an agricultural society but the bible tells us that god is always looking for fruit for produce and in that parable of the sower that jesus told there are issues preventing uh, the crop growing either there's no deep root or there's weeds or there's hardness and the hardness had to do with persecution which exposed a real thin ground that when trouble started that oh, i can't be, can't be doing with this christianity thing um and all weeds, and that's the cares of the worries. Uh, there's, there's lots of you. I haven't got time to unpack that parable now, and I don't want to really, because what I want to say is that in that parable, God is looking for multiplied fruit. And in the good ground, there was 30, 60, 100 fold multiplied fruit. In fact, the first ever commandment that God said to anyone was this be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> Amazing. And throughout the Old Testament, there's this idea of being fruitful as a sign of blessing. I love Psalm 1, which says this, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked, or stand in the way of that, that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. What a beautiful promise for those who really dig into the word of God. And God wants us to bear fruit. But what kind of fruit? And uh, thinking again in the Old Testament, the prophet Hosea said this, sow righteousness. So he's thinking of the idea of sowing and reaping. Sow righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up your unplowed ground for it's time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. But then he goes on to say, but you've planted wickedness, you've reaped evil. And obviously there was a rebuke there for the Old Testament people of God who had gone away from God's ways. He says, you've eaten the fruit of deception because you've defended on, depended on your own strength and on your many warriors. And then as the religious leaders came to see um, John the Baptist, uh, he says to them, he says, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. The axe is already laid at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. You see, Jesus was always looking for fruit and teaching about crops. Um, Jesus warned us of false teachers by speaking about their fruitlessness. He said a, a, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And this was a, a parable about the outcome of people's lives, the fruit of people's lives. And God wants people to bear fruit. You know, Jesus, it, I can uh, remember that story where Jesus went and looked for a fruit on a fig tree. And in fact, it, it says it wasn't even the, the time for, for figs, but he was looking for fruit. In fact, Jesus cursed the tree because he couldn't find fruit on it. Jesus wants us to be fruitful. God wants us to bear fruit. And in the New Testament, it's unpacked for us a bit more. The fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and all those beautiful things. And then uh, the Apostle Paul prays two prayers, one, to the, one for the Colossians, one for the Philippian church. We're going to be looking at Philippians, a, a letter in lockdown. We're going to be preaching through that this coming Sunday and the following Sunday mornings. But he prays for the Colossian church, this wonderful prayer. He says this in Colossians 1. Verse 9, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we've not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom, through, through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, 
that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Bearing fruit in every good work. You see, bearing fruit, fruit bearers, that's what God wants us to be. And then to the, the Philippians, right at the end, um, Paul prays this prayer. This is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory, to the glory and praise of God. And so how do we get the fruit? Well, it is, as Paul prayed there, it comes through Jesus Christ. You know, with roots that go deeper uh, than ever, that's what we need, deep, deep roots. And uh, currently our climate, I'm just looking out the window, the gardens are dry. I was putting some water on the grass yesterday because the garden needs rain. We need to have roots that go deep, even in times of drought. And our roots need to go down right into God. And so I just want to finish really with a very simple uh, reminder of what Jesus said um, about being in Christ, abiding in him. Remain or abide in me and I will remain, or I will abide in you. John chapter 15. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear fruit much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing so it's about remaining in Jesus just keeping our roots into him keeping in prayer and reading the word let's make sure we grow some very deep roots in this time even as there's not been much rain around that will kind of remind us you can see the, the plants that are withering because they have no root but God wants us to be fruitful to bear much fruit for him so I want to pray and now I want to sing a really really old song um, but I'm going to pray this prayer, and I'll read it and I'll pray it, because this is the prayer that Paul prayed for, for that Colossian church. We continually ask God to fill us. Lord Jesus, would you do that? Fill us with a knowledge of your will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives us, so that we may live a life worthy of the Lord and please you in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. That's what we want to do, Lord, to grow in our knowledge of you and bear much fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, um, I, was thinking of, I was thinking about this uh, reading this morning, and thinking about bearing fruit, and uh, I just remembered a song that was written a long time ago, and we used to sing at the church, you are the vine, we are the branches, keep us abiding in you. And some of you if you remember, you're allowed to make a comment and say, oh, I remember that song. See if you remember it. And if it's new to you, that's fine. Um, it's the song we're probably not going to do because it's kind of old school, but it's good school. And it goes like this. You are the vine. We are the branches. Keep us abiding.
the branches keep us abiding in you. It's our prayer today. Keep us abiding in you. Amen. God bless you.